Watching girls eat cucumbers in public is just it's kinda wrong. <laughs> We're gonna start it over. Our trip to Shikoku starts now. We have just landed in Takamatsu Airport and Shikoku means four lands. What you see behind me, four different colors. Let's go find out about those colors. What we're sitting in right now, this airport is smack dab in the middle of Kagawa. If you go south, this is uh, Tokushima. Over here, this blue one is Kochi, and the green one is Ehime. And I think from the name, Ehime sounds really, really boring. And I can't <laughs> wait to go there. <laughs> it sounds really boring, like an old man's name. <laughs> so I'm excited to go there. But we're going to be spending some time in Kagawa. And that's where everything starts. I, I, I think we have things to do here. We had lunch with a Japanese friend of ours a couple days ago who is not from this area of Japan. She's from a northern area in Japan. And I was like, hey, we're going to be with Shikoku soon. What is the one thing that you think of when you think of the word Shikoku? And immediately what came out of her mouth was udon. <laughs> and you can't even get out of the airport before you start finding udon. So this is like a noodle dish that is like super famous all over Japan, but apparently it has got some sort of special twist or there's some specialities going on in the Shikoku area. So I am looking forward to checking that out. And um, I think we're gonna skip the airport one and find something a little less airporty. <laughs> but uh, I do think that udon is gonna be a thing that we're gonna eat a few times at least. <laughs> Speaking of udon, this dude's advertisement is pretty awesome. He's not a real dude, he's like a cardboard dude. <laughs> and uh, he's got some uh, text on him, and this says, like, for a trip, you have a... Says, Betsubara is... I don't know how to translate that. It means you have a second stomach. Like, I, I've got another stomach, I can eat more. Like, I can have dessert or something like that. So, like, there's more room in there, even though I'm already stuffed. And um, so, it's talking about, like, on your trips, you know, I guess you can eat a lot. And then down here, it says... Um, <laughs> It's an adult's udon prefecture, which is like, I guess this dude thinks he's going to be spinning some classy udon. I don't know. I don't know the image I'm supposed to have in my head from like an adult udon prefecture. <laughs> Ooh, you be driving. There are some buttons I can't tell what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> So we got our wheels, and the first thing I'm disappointed about is there well, doesn't we're seem to be. we're rolling into disappointed town quickly. There, there doesn't seem to be a heat seat warmer. I didn't take any sort of ass heat pills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> well, I, that makes me really happy that my butt is not going to be in lava status <laughs> the entire time I'm in Shikoku. But That's... there's a lot of other buttons over here I haven't figured out yet. We got some mysteries. Yeah, some mystery buttons. I don't know them, Kanjis. <laughs> A little bit of smell of vision It smells like fall burning leaves. Like when you were little and you'd uh, rake the leaves at your house and uh, some parents would put these things in bags. Others would burn them. So dangerous, so exciting. <laughs> it smells like that. Um, Asia has its own kind of burning leaf smell. So it, it's that Asian twist, but it does remind me of being in home during uh, fall time. And the, the weather right now feels quite fall for, su surprising for spring, it feels like fall. Let's go over here in your gear. So we've gone from the airport to a restaurant. How long did we take in that drive? I don't know, was it 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that? Okay. Okay. A feature of the car uh -huh. tells you how long you sat at traffic lights, how long you idled. Did you already read it? I did already read it. I'm sorry. Derp. I was going to ruin it. Did I ruin it? You ruined it. Yeah, but that's kind of cool because when you're, when you, this is one of those cars that stops when you're not moving. I, I wish I knew how long our journey was total. Yeah. I'm going to put it at 40 to 45 minutes. Yeah, and we were. And we sat idling for six minutes of that yeah that's japan is that I'm more gonna, than 10 this is gonna sound like a, spent at a traffic light this is gonna sound like a really dumb question but do cars outside of japan shut off at stoplights yeah they do they do yeah okay i had no idea like we uh, hate it when we lived <laughs> yeah when we lived in america it was long ago enough that i don't think i was ever in a car that did that no no it wasn't a thing so now I'm just like, I don't know, is that a Japan thing? Or Why is it turning thing? off? I mean, I've gotten used to it now, but uh, yeah. 
I'm not a big fan of it. I wish it just didn't make as much noise. Could it, could the car turn on? I'm looking forward to better? electric cars. Yeah, you are. That would be amazing. Mm. Bet you were expecting udon, but that did not happen. We actually had three options for udon that we could have. Turns out that udon here is a lunch thing. So that narrowed down many, many places. So we were left with three places and the one that we wanted to go for, we called them and they never answered the phone. So we assume that maybe they're closed because of Golden Week having been many days that they'd be open and they needed a break after that. So we've ended up at what I called medieval meat in the guidebook and it looks incredible and smells incredible. I'm pretty much blown away at what we've walked into. We're gonna have to start with the sticks. I, I don't know if that's gonna work for this. Wow. We read that this meat just falls off the bone. I'm gonna say didn't just fall off the bone too easily. There we go. Can it smell as good as it tastes? Can it taste as good as it smells? Never mind. Yes, it can. Oh my god. I like a dry bird. This is incredibly moist and it's to the point where one might say it's over seasoned because it kind of attacks you and the seasoning is very exciting but the attack is totally welcome. Holy crap. I, I can't believe you can do that to a little tiny piece of meat that I just ate. The, the, the fireworks that are going off in my mouth are ridiculous. In addition to the medieval bird, we've also come and uh, found that they have something called tori meshi, which is something that we had at the end of our Kagoshima trip that we went on a few months ago. And uh, this was like my, one of my favorite meals that I've had in, um, in Japan. It was like, really, really good. And it is like a rice dish that has a lot of different fixings. And then they would put soup in it, which was kind of like, unique. It was very interesting. But here they've given us the rice and that is all in this little bowl and they've also with it on the menu it comes with a soup on the side. However there isn't a way to ladle one to the other and if I did put it in here there are no spoons to get the liquid out of this bowl, which would be necessary because it would be strange to pick this style of bowl up and drink directly out of it. So I think that maybe in Kagoshima, their torimeshi is done that way, but here I'm getting the vibe that that's not how you do it. So I'm just gonna try it dry. Um, and we've got like some egg uh, shavings that I always look at and go, wow, that's some really strange looking cheese, but in this case it's egg and some uh, beni shoga, which is like uh, pickled ginger. And it's been kind of steamed, which I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing has been steamed a bit, and it looks like there's some pieces of chicken and things inside of this as well. Um, the rice is, um, I don't know how to explain. It's like been cooked with the chicken flavor and stuff, like the rice. So it's not just like plain white rice. There's more going on with the rice. But it's not a brown rice. It was right, right, white rice before I danced with the chicken. And I mean, it's just a very, it's a very strong chicken flavor. I really like the shaved egg stuff. It's so good. Um, and then the soup. It's weird though, because it's dry and I really want to just put the soup in there. <laughs> I just don't know, am I gonna look, like what's the make of the thing? Like, look at that stupid foreigner pouring the soup in this. <laughs> What he makes you bowl or whatever. Oh. The Inside that soup, it looks like it's chicken skins. Yeah, that does look like chicken skins or, well, a little bit, a little bit of meat left on it, but yeah, definitely chicken skins, really chewy. Everything is very, very flavorful. The chicken flavor and the, just the rice alone. Usually rice in Japan doesn't have a flavor per se, but it does have a flavor and the soup has got a very strong flavor. It's very salty, but very chickeny at the same time. Um, yeah, it's, it's just attacking all your senses in a way that is not quite usual of Japanese cuisine. It's kind of fun. 
I'll keep this very short. Onigiri. We all know about these rice balls. But the thing that I noticed in our guidebook was this. Follow. We were driving through a random new city and it's got a little castle. And on our GPS, there's a little castle. Dinner is finished and we have come to our hotel for the night, which is a love hotel booked on booking.com. These are called adult only places on booking.com. I don't know if we qualify, but we're here and no one's turned us away. Um, driving up to the place, we saw that little castle as we were driving here. We're now staying in a rainbow castle. It looked amazing from outside. A little old lady came outside. She gave us this manual to tell us how to use this love hotel. We know where to put it. I'm just gonna leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, put what? Oh. oh. Okay. Um, so she gave us a little manual and it basically just says like, welcome to the hotel and you're going to use this bot when you come inside your room. We're in our room. We, we are in a room so far, which doesn't smell like cigarettes, which is a plus. There's a nice big bed. We haven't, we haven't looked too far because we feel like we have to pay this lady before she ends up coming to our room and freaking out. So we've heard that we're supposed to press the green button. Do we feel confident <laughs> that we're going to press the green button? Okay. This... Wait a second. This is locking us in. In three minutes, we'll be locked in here. Think we're gonna have to wait for three minutes? I think she's doing something on her end. <gasps> I'm talking to the old lady? Through a robot. Through a robot. That's my guess. Interesting. Shall we take a tour of the room <laughs> until that bot talks to us a little bit? Um, Beth looks a little ghetto. A little, little used. A little yellow. Yeah, a little, little yellow. But it's spacious, that's kind of nice. Um, good ventilation, it's good. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued by these. I think this is pantyhose. It looks like a small microwave. Like that, <laughs> like a hot pocket's gonna come out of yeah, here. Yeah, but are those condoms down there? Massa so, no, that says massage jelly, dude. That's like a cock ring or something. <laughs> um, panties, there, there is a vibrator. I don't know what that one is, but wow. Um, hot pot. That is, it already has water in it. That freaks me out. Mm, it should so not already have water What's in it. What's going on down here underneath? Is this uh, normal stuff? Uh, mainly, yeah, normal stuff. Cups and chopsticks and things like that. There's a microwave in here. We could, we could heat things if we wanted to. Microwave, refrigerator with a power button. Interesting. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's not as freaky as the other one, but I've never seen this inside of a refrigerator. We've got beer, cola, water, and prices aren't ridiculous. They're vending machine prices, so it's not bad. I thought about getting a drink on the... I could take my backpack off. <laughs> I thought about getting a drink on the plane. Plane prices are still crazy. A, a warning. Yeah, I'm not gonna couch. sit there. That's gnarly. <laughs> um, a very pink toilet. It's pretty good. And. Do you see a light? It's really dark. I don't see a way to turn the light. Oh, wait. Here we go. It got darker. It's a mystery, dude. <laughs> Is there a light in there? There's a light. It's right there. Huh. Well, it's just a shower. Gonna need to get some candles. <laughs> they didn't sell that next to the cock rings. <laughs> <laughs> we pushed lots of buttons and 
absolutely nothing happened. We don't know if the door locked. Basically, we've mentally locked ourselves in this room. I don't know if we should touch anything that's gonna, it's an alarm in this little pamphlet the lady gave us that an alarm will go off. So just everybody stay calm, move lightly. Don't wanna set off any of the alarms. <laughs> Where are you going? Just trying to get you in on that dino walk you were doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also noticed something that we've never seen before. Um, this love hotel has free breakfast on weekdays. And I'm seriously contemplating doing it because one, we don't have breakfast plans tomorrow. And two, love hotel breakfast. <laughs> Is there going to be like a... I can, I can f fill a lot of things into this <laughs> sentence that I'm just I'm gonna stop there. I feel like I went far enough with the vending machine that uh, we're probably good on that. Use your imagination. Good morning from Hotel Kyoto. <laughs> it was a okay night's sleep. I mean, it wasn't nasty. Um, something when, you, when, you, when you're in a place like this, you start to find things. Like when we first walk in, we make a video. We're like, okay, you know, we did everything, and but then you're looking around. Like there's more things I'm finding, and a couple of things we did find. This is a pile of. It's I can't show it to you because it's like border. It is pornographic, basically. Things are blurred out as you would imagine, but uh, it's smut, and it, it's sort of like. Some of it is like you can call a girl and just talk to her, but some of it is like if you're in like Osaka and here's a list of the girls that you can like have escort services from and it's got their pictures and stuff in there. So like it's like it's it's like a catalog basically and there's a bunch of them down there and then some of them are also just like what's going to be on TV but it's all like like gnarly stuff. I have two comments. You have two comments? Yes, two oh, okay. We, we see girls on the train that have two cell phones. And that, that just occurred to me that that could be a two cell phone situation. You're right. Yeah, because be... they don't want that going to their regular phone, so they buy burner phone. Or more than likely, it's not a burner phone. They have a separate one, and the girls that are in those magazines are going to be double cell phone girls. And also, back in the day when we started seeing these magazines for the first time, girls would cover their eyes like this. Now they're covering their mouths like this. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. I, that just is very weird because I'm sorry, your eyes describe you a lot more than your mouth. And then <laughs> the other thing that I found that was really funny is we're in this, we're in a pretty classy joint, let's, let's be real. Uh, they've got some um, framed like photos, right? And the, this is from Uruguay or something, I think I saw. And... Uh, it is, a, it is a calendar that they cut up. <laughs> you see it says June 2013. So they just cut up a calendar and then put these down here. And it's not like, there's not just one sun, there's two. <laughs> August is pretty nice. August is pretty nice. I mean, they're nice pictures, but it's just so like ridiculously ghetto that they just like, they just cut a calendar up and framed it. <laughs> All right. And I think that that is the end of the end of the time we're going to be here. We're all packed up and stuff, so we're going to try to pay now. Like last night, we pushed the button and it didn't do much for us. But I think that now, when I push this button, it will alert a person. So let's put push this button. Let's just wait a second. And now it's telling oh, me how much I have to pay. There we go. So. Alright, I'm just gonna, oh wait, no, it says don't put it all in at once. That's what she said. <laughs> Each one of these bills is like $9.73 or something, if anybody's curious. Alright, and now we're hoping for change. <laughs> this has been a pleasant transaction. It has been a very pleasant transaction. All right, and I got my change, and um, now we're now we're done. I guess we can leave, and the alarm won't go off, which is. <laughs> I do believe the door will be unlocked, and we 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 have we have paid for our freedom. <laughs> We didn't explain this super well last night, how that this hotel works, and I'm not gonna get into it super deep, but basically the room is actually up these stairs. So we slept on the second floor above where the car is parked. 
And the reason that they do it like this is so that you can come here anonymously and you can just like pull in and go up to the room and then you can do everything without ever having to talk to a person because this is some place that you're supposed to be like private or whatever. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of these bays back here so you can just come and pull right in. You don't have to use booking.com. And I'd also like to point out that like legit, like there's a castle here. <laughs> this, this is a really cool theme. I love seeing stuff like this. It's not only for lunch, you can also get breakfast udon and that is where we are right now. We just chose the closest udon we could find in our book that's actually open before lunchtime. Maybe 20% of them open before lunchtime and this is one of them. And we were surprised to walk in and find that there's almost like a, I don't even know, like a cafeteria line where you get your tray and you put your plate down. They have udon but they also offer Oden, which is something that I got. Um, this is atsuage, which is tofu that's been um, deep fried. And they put a stopper on it with the konyaku. I kind of like that. This way, not so much. This way, stopped. I thought that was brilliant. And you could get inari sushi or other types of tempura items that go hand in hand with soba or udon. I got their standard bukake udon. And Surprisingly, it comes with lemon. It smells like that lemon is cooking on there right now. And it's just expressing the lemon flavor. Some onions and some little bits of uh, batter that have been deep fried with no other items. And that's the udon they're serving up here. I'm just gonna grab some of these noodles. This is looking dangerous, getting more and more dangerous, getting worried. That's a fresh noodle. That's a, that's a noodle that's escaping the bowl. It's really long. It is incredibly fresh to where um, you can, it feels like the dumplings that I would have when I was little. Um, and, and not like my mom's dumplings, like the pasta dumplings that people would make. Um, yeah, it is, they must have just made this. <laughs> Oh, should I try this as well? <laughs> or do we just want to watch this action some more? Um, I've been falling more in love with the tofu uh, for uh, Oden. Udon and Oden in the same meal is very hard. This is Oden, Udon, Oden, Udon, Oden, Udon, Udon, Oden. It's, I did very good there. So. Just tofu on the inside. Eric says tofu has no flavor, and that had a lot of flavor. Well, that's been brewing in the stew. So. Brewing in the stew, but the, the tofu is what the, the flavor was. Yeah, that was quite good. This is a very good start to the morning. I don't feel like it's a unhealthy food or anything deep fried. <laughs> Never mind. It doesn't feel unhealthy, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna be overindulgent either. So I'm gonna eat this now. So it turns out that Sanuki Udon, which is like the Udon that comes from this area, is characterized by its noodles that are square and have flat edges. So this isn't a puffy Udon where like you could have rolled it or something like that. This has like been cut perfectly and all of the sides are flat. Uh, it's an incredible noodle. I'm Udon will be different for me in the future. The next time I have it, I think I'm gonna be disappointed. Um, and I didn't talk enough about this lemon situation. Holy crap, does that change the excitement of the dish. It, it just adds a whole new level to the broth. I don't wanna have udon or other soups without lemon now. You need to bring a square noodle and a lemon to every udon shop you go to now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have an exacto knife slicing down the noodles on my own lemon. I feel like it's rare that we say maybe how we're feeling on the day or something like that, but right now I'm actually quite tired um, and I have a bowl full of udon. So I'm just kind of sitting here sinking into my chair, not realizing that I should be going out and doing other things. But don't worry, if we're attacked by vampires, we can kill them. <laughs> Little random tidbit here. 
This is a help wanted sign. And in specific, it labels that they're willing to hire men or women, which seems like if you wrote something like that on a sign in the West, <laughs> can you imagine that in America? We're only hiring men right now. <laughs> Probably wouldn't go over too well. <laughs> I got a lime coke. Have you had one of these? I don't think so. Those are. Those are. You put the lime in the coconut. Yeah, maybe I have had it because I know the ad that they had uh, back in America. Is lime coke? Oh, that's a thing from America too? It's a thing that they do periodically, I think. Oh. Maybe not in America. I, I have seen them do it periodically here. I thought it was like a special. Not as intense as that lemon in the udon. <laughs> but uh, it's still a refreshing beverage. <laughs> Shikoku is a medium-sized island, and one of the things that I knew about it before we came is that it is very mountainous. A very distinct feature immediately when we were landing on the plane and when we got out of the airport is you'll see these types of hills, these like little domes and they're kind of speckled all over the place. And I really love these little things. Every, I don't know why I keep thinking about this whenever I see one, I was like, what would it be like to climb to the top? I feel like I never have, because it would be like really thickly wooded, because I don't, I mean, maybe this one has got people on it, but not all of them are inhabited or whatever. So I just wonder if we could find one that would just take like, you know, 20, 30 minutes or something to get to the top of, maybe we should try to climb one if like we had that opportunity. Also, it's very obvious, but this golden field right here is just completely amazing. They're everywhere right now in this time of year, which surprises me because this is, we're here in the spring. And this looks like a fall style thing, but uh, yeah, you, it's just mixed in with the green ones and the gold ones. It's very, very nice. Very, very nice touch. You a farmer? I'm a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> when we told people that we're going to Shikoku, uh, they immediately ask like, are you going on the pilgrimage? So let me tell you about the pilgrimage. There's like, 88 shrines that you can walk around Shikoku, almost like kind of coast to the coast, and uh, you can visit all 88 shrines. Takes a month. We have 10 days. We will not be doing that pilgrimage, but I do want to show you the pilgrimage I want to do, which will be very hard to see because I have decorated this map a whole lot. But they had to make a special icon because of all the udon in this area, so all these little bowl icons are Sanuki udon, and here they are. They're all over the place. I want to do that pilgrimage. <laughs> That's what I want. I put a place into the GPS and when we got here, we just got slammed into super tourist town. We had no idea we were coming to a street that was just ice cream, udon, ice cream, udon. That's why people are here. <laughs> Aside from, there's a gigantic temple with many, many stairs that we're about to go up. And I'm starting at the beginning. I've seen many different numbers. I think this chunk of stairs is like 365 stairs. And I think the total to get up to the shrine on the inside or like the main shrine is 785. So we're gonna have a lot of stairs. <laughs> Apparently you can rent bamboo sticks for a hundred yen to take up the stairs with you for uh, added cuteness and perhaps some stability, I don't know. This one's looking really worn in. It even has a sticker on it. Somebody's branded it, has some interesting tape. Feels sturdy. <laughs> I think this will be our guy. And Well, I'm, I should say my guy, I'm not sharing. Get your own stick. So before the stairs, everything was ice cream and udon and high school students. And after the stairs had begun, it has just become stairs and older people and touristy type shops, but like not ice cream and not udon. And you getting hit with the stick. <laughs> this is not going to be a good sign. And they told us it takes like an hour and a half to do this. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hit me with that stick the whole time? Yep. Seems Give about me a break. right. I'll be back. <laughs> Hit you with the six soon. Figure out the name of where we are. This is a Kotohira. I don't know if that's the name of like the area or the temple in general, but holy crap, we are at not even at step 168. Let's get there. 168. Here we go. 
166, 167, 168. All right, sweet. This is gonna be, that, that's one seventh of what we're doing or, or a little more than that, but. Remember when you said you were tired? <laughs> yeah, I had, I had an energy drink in the car. <laughs> so I'm gonna be blasting up these stairs. <laughs> I think I might get to find out what's on top of one of those hills <laughs> the way we're climbing up these stairs but the further you get up the less dense the shops get and then you have these little offshoots where you've got little statues and like religious looking things and this looks like a oh this is really cool look at this map I think this is actually pretty interesting because the way that this map is justified is how Japanese people often think about Japan where this would normally in our minds be north and this would be south. And I mean, it is north and south, but this is a very strong way to show how they think of Western Japan and Eastern Japan, because they will talk about the Tokyo area being the Western area. And then down here and it would be, or I'm sorry, Eastern area. And then over here would be the Western area of Japan. And it sort of is like that, but the way that Americans or uh, English speakers always talk about it is north and south. So it's not that strange in a sense to see a map turned on its side like this, super, super emphasizing that east and west divide. Um, but yeah, so in addition to the that dude and the map, it looks like they've just got some like historical items and stuff like sit off to the side. And this area is famous for being a historical town and stuff. And they have lots of museums and art museums and stuff speckled in and out of the like uh, touristy stuff. You're really milking this break from the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a stick. What do you want? <laughs> You're cheating. Come here, let me hit you with it. <laughs> This stone marker that's along the stairs has got a date on it when it was installed. And it says it was installed in, I had to do my math here. So I had to read this in Japanese and it's a Japanese year and I had to convert it and it's a Japanese year system, like time period that I'm not really familiar with because it's so old. But I think this was put in in 1925, which is, um, it's quite a while ago. <laughs> like when you find things that are pre-war and are still existing, it's pretty cool in Japan. And I mean, I guess maybe Shikoku, this area probably wasn't involved in the war directly so much. So maybe that's why you would see things like that. But like in other areas, everything was so destroyed that it can be hard to find things that predate World War II and stuff. So it's got like seeing that, it's neat. <laughs> It's flattened out a little bit. Well, I guess we're still going up, but it's not stairs. It's a, little, it's a slight incline. And apparently this little road is covered with sakura trees, which are not in bloom now, but when they would be in bloom, it would be pretty amazing because it's pretty spectacular looking even without them in bloom as it's Wait. flanked by these, um, how would you describe these things? Slabs. Slabs that have got the engraved names of slabs. donors that have given money to the shrine just engraved onto them. And it's very similar to that shrine in uh, Kyoto that has the, the 1,000 gates. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And those are all done Fushimi by donors. Inari Taisho. Yeah. Taisho. And yeah. these are slabs to show who's donated here. These are a little more permanent, though, because they're not made of wood. True, yeah. But it's like you're just kind of walking through the forest and stuff, and it's just got that special Japanese I'm in Zelda right now feel. What's this one? Is that... Showa. Uh, yeah, it's Showa. It's just... That's really bad handwriting. Come on, people. <laughs> you don't want to see you write something in rock. <laughs> I'm a great rock writer. <laughs> you probably see this group of people walking past us. It's a, like a junior high school or a high school, I guess. I don't know. I have a hard time telling which. My vote's on high school. You think it's on high school? Yeah, I don't know. They could be like third year junior high school students too. But um, it, it, we're going past like flock after flock after flock of this aged schoolgirls. Mm. So it must be something that like the local schools and stuff are like, you know, this is a field trip or whatever. Yep. Because I mean, what is it, Thursday afternoon or something? I'm <laughs> shocked that they haven't been told they have to go and speak with an English speaker. Oh yeah, because, that uh, does happen. Junior high school, that is their their major thing. I would spend weeks training with them. But then they, but those times they'd be going to places like Kyoto and stuff where there would be a high concentration of people that are traveling from yeah. outside of Japan. We, Here, we've seen two other foreigners since we've been here in 24 hours. Yeah. So, so they probably aren't, they don't even think, <laughs> like the, how hard would it be if they unleashed 2,000 students on two foreigners? 
<laughs> just wouldn't be it just wouldn't be fair. In That's Kyoto, vicious. it's possible. It would be vicious. <laughs> Let's just be happy they don't have that policy. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I forgot which step we're on. It's like 461 or something. Page 28. Ah, we're on step 431. And at step 431, you get to meet Kon Pira Inu. And Konpira Inu, from what we've tried to deduce, is a representation of how back in the day, people would come and do shrine pilgrimages, which are still happening as I talked about them earlier. Um, people who would get sick or were unable to do the pilgrimage would actually send dogs in their place. And that, that is why this, this Inu, this dog, is sitting here. People would send dogs to, I guess, visit all of the shrines. Or just and visit this one, maybe. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. I yeah. can't imagine that a dog would understand the 88 shrines. <laughs> I don't think a dog would figure out one. <laughs> he looks smart. <laughs> he doesn't have a stick. I'll give him mine. I'd like to point out that I read that sign and I, I'm, I'm only about 80% sure that I got all those facts right. <laughs> like, mm. But it does seem a little crazy, right? Like when you say it out loud, like, okay, a dog would go up the mountain for its owner? Like, is this a real thing? Or like, how, <laughs> what's going on? Dude, dude, I saw a penguin get on a bus once. <laughs> so I, I have confidence in this That's dog. True. We did see a penguin that rode the bus. Eric, I just want to tell you the rules about what you're about to do. No touching or feeding the horses, please. Okay, I will try to refrain. Behave yourself. There's also no flash photography, so keep your shirt on. Woo! <laughs> it's a little bit more of a mystery than the dog statue, but they've got horses here, but like not statues of horses, they've got real horses. There's two of them, and they're very, very clean, and they look like they're very well taken care of. It says that this specific horse is from Obihiro in Hokkaido, and that is where the somewhat brutal horse races that I saw when I was hitchhiking up there a couple of eight, couple of years ago were taking place. So I feel like this horse probably got a better situation on the side of this mountain than being involved in those horrible horse races. And if you saw the videos, you knew what I'm talking, know what I'm talking about. How did they get a horse up here? <laughs> did he do the stairs? Why are they here? I'm not really clear, but we got ponies, y'all. The color of white that he is has that blue hue of godly, completely mythical. He has like an aura around him that just says he could probably fly, and well, you don't know that. <laughs> it says something about him being a god horse. Yeah, that's what I'm, now I'm looking at it, I'm like, I could see why you come to that conclusion. <laughs> And we've got one more statue here, and this is an elephant in dedication to all of the elephants that did the pilgrimage for their owners back in the day. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't know why there's an elephant statue here. We're a long way from Africa. <laughs> why is he doing that? The people said it was going to take about an hour and a half. No joke. No joke whatsoever. <laughs> Um, we started probably down here has to be where we parked and then you come up there are stairs 113 is here <laughs> and then there are more stairs and more stairs and we stopped at 365 and saw some ladies doing some things and then this is the area where we walked and it was very flat with the slabs and then we come up to 431 where we met the Inu a little dog and now we're at 477 where you can veer off to the right and check out a little temple area or you can continue upward even further. Um, and I don't even know what's going to happen once we get up to this point. But what I am noticing is this number right here. 1,368. Holy crap. I did not think that that was the number we'd be working towards. <laughs> um, but now I am challenged. We will continue. As was illustrated on the map, there are a lot of little sub shrines and stuff that are just off to the sides and things that are going on. And the atmosphere has completely shifted away from being a touristy feeling thing, even though I'm sure during the weekends and stuff that could be probably pretty crowded here. Mm. But thank you Thursday. Yeah, thank you Thursday. It's gotten to the point where it's like almost tranquil. 
and there's like a nice breeze and it's just it's just like the perfect experience like the perfect time for this yep. and my I, stick's got the right sound i was a little worried when we started off in that tourist area that it was just going to be like that the whole way mm. but i think that that was just me being <laughs> pessimistic in a way that's not fair because things really aren't ever like that you go through that sec sec section and then you always end up in this like amazing tranquility yeah it's just like super super japanese i love it oh this will be step 500. Is that it? Yep. I did it? Yep, we did it. All right. <laughs> wow, wow. Look. Just keeps going. Basically every corner you walk around is just like, wow, that's amazing. We're over halfway. To, to the very end? To the 13. Yeah. Oh, really? But the staircase I'm eyeballing right now doesn't look so friendly. No, it looks oh a little. Oh my god! Looks a little steeper. <laughs> it's not often that I come across something that I see things all the time I don't understand. They don't get me wrong, but it's not often that we come across something that I have never feel like I've ever seen before. And this is a turtle with this situation where it's got these wood things hanging on these rods and then there's some money on the inside like you know people have left i have no idea what these little wooden things are for it looks like an abacus or something like you could use it for counting maybe I, i'm completely lost i have no idea i don't even know how to look this up <laughs> i'm lost all right when i said that we didn't know how to look this up maybe that was a little bit premature because katie was like this, this has writing on it and started looking up like what this means and what it means is Hyakudo Ishi which according to my dictionary means it is a marker for counting a hundred times of prayer so then we were like okay maybe there's a hundred of these little wooden like danglers here so we counted them and each bar has 15 and then there is eight of them total bars so that's like what 120 120 120 unless we're completely dumb that's 120 it's for overachievers it's a, <laughs> so it's a it's yeah i guess you can count maybe when you come to pray to the specific thing you slide the thing over once over believers over believers <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm just completely taking a shot in the dark about how this functions but yeah it's pretty cool i've never seen something like this i like finding things it's like okay that's new hmm a little kid was just using this, and he declared that the sight you could see was the Inaka countryside. To the surprise of no one, we have popped up and found another magnificent looking shrine. Jetting out the side of it, this one has got a, like a walking path? How would you describe this thing? Like a bridge system, kind of, that goes over to another one? Uh, yeah, I feel like it does have a name for what that is, but the structure is it's like a, it's like a hallway, but it's outside and yeah. covered. It's really, really neat looking. Mm. And I, I don't know, just I'm kind of impressed by the grandiose of the amount of stuff that they've got up here. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a lot of stuff and it's all very, very intricate and it's not tacky in any way. It's just really like serene. Yeah. Really cool. It I, makes sense that it would stand out among like what people would recommend for you to see. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling like maybe we should do those 88 temples someday now. How much udon are they going to give me? <laughs> it's going to be a lot of udon y'all. <laughs> The temple structure here is dedicated to seafaring and people and companies come here to worship. Um, maybe not to worship, but to commit themselves in a way to this temple so that they'll get the energy of this temple. And there's a lot of pictures here and a gigantic kind of, is this a schooner? <laughs> it's a solar What's powered it? schooner, dude. Yeah, so like boats and stuff like that. Um, and then you see like huge companies like MOL is a gigantic shipping company that I read for. And I'm assuming that they've put this picture here because they have donated to this um, area of the temple or the temple in general. And they're showing off their stuff. There's other stuff behind you like nice cock oh. and uh, other companies and things like that. So this is an interesting way for them to kind of like companies and people who are doing seafaring things to be involved with the shrine. That's more than just having your name and company and the date engraved on a slab. Yeah, this is they're getting like 
good juju as well yeah, from, it, from, the, from the seafaring gods. And it's a striking display. It, it really is. is. Like, I feel like I'm in somebody's grandpa's uh, garage. They're like boating garage. And these are like all the plaques that they hung up from all the adventures that they went on. And that's how it feels. It's clearly it has solar panels on it. But this is also the world's first solar boat that was made out of recycled cans. <laughs> So this thing is like Coca-Cola cans. And then they were like, we're going to put some sun power and then out to the sea with you. And I can really understand why if you were going to go sailing on this boat, you might come here first and get in check with the seafaring gods because Coca-Cola don't float on water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're casually looking for the oldest date we can find on one of these stone tablets or basically anything as we're going up. And we're not checking every single one, but this one caught my eye because this is Meiji on it. So it's from like the Meiji era, which is fairly old and it came from Meiji 35. That means that this was 1902 that this one was erected. So this is currently the champion of the oldest things we found so far. <laughs> things have thinned out a little bit here. Well, it seems like the 728 stair mark is where most people make the U-turn to go back down. Yeah. Because it's quite simple there. I mean, we're, we're almost we're on. almost doubling that. So, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's like a little shrine here, a little shrine there. It's uh, mostly just kind of like trees and birds. Yeah, I have. I heard a bird when we were in the hotel last night, and I was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> oh, I hear a bird. Yeah, <laughs> well, you don't hear those often in Tokyo. It's weird. Yeah, you just got those big crows that are stealing people's babies, but they don't make a whole lot of noise. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear the song he's going to sing anyways. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Hide your kids, hide So apparently there's a ride you can take to the top that, that was not accessible when we walked by it downstairs. Looks safe. No seatbelts needed on this bumpy ride. You hold on tight and you're down there in no time. Uh, it's like a diesel engine that's just hooked to scaffolding that's on some sort of track. I want to watch this run. Like, how, how does this work? What, I doubt they do it during the day so much because that noise would really kill the ambiance of this enjoyable track. <laughs> but I'd like to be on it. A sign specifically to say no writing this. <laughs> that is the most disappointing thing I have found out today. <laughs> it's for bringing up like prayer stuffs. Mm, it smells good. We made it to Izu Tamajinja, which is the 1,368th step of this un... We weren't ready for this when we came here. I think I didn't even tell you. You knew it was a stair temple, <laughs> and I thought we'd be going up to 700. I was prepared for that, but then when the 13 hit me, I was like, kind of a maybe, but, but feeling challenged, and you were like, we're doing it, so... And he even gave me a nudge, like a physical nudge in the right direction. Once you've reached the top, it's pretty gorgeous. Um, even better than what we saw at 700. There's little people down there moving. All the things are happening down there that were happening when we were down there. But now I feel like we're above it all. The walk back down doesn't take you on the exact same trail that you took up. So you're seeing some of the structures from a different angle from just completely the side. You can see into shrines and things like that that you before got a front on and it was like wowing. And then you also get closer up than you did because I was beelining up that hill. All right. <laughs> I did not see this amazing jug from down below where we were walking earlier. But inside of this jug is a ton of just their coins, but mostly they're one yen coins. And you can kind of see why people are doing that because they're coming over here and trying to make the one yen coin float which is probably the only coin that can float maybe in the world. <laughs> this money, is there metal in this money? I don't know. Um, I, my, my, first, my first try is just gonna be to drop it in okay. and just see. No, that didn't work. That did not work. Man, that costs a lot. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna try just the on the water. <gasps> I did it. I was gonna say first try, but uh, 
That was the second try. Wow. That was weirdly easy. You want to try it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have lots of one yen coins. For you? Show me what you've got. Yeah, one yen. <laughs> I've actually done this before with like um, uh, like an izakaya with some friends. Like I'd put it on top of the drinks because a lot of people don't realize these will float. And it's always like, whoa. And it's, you know, it's kind of this cool thing. Probably the same thing you're thinking. It's like, whoa, you can make a coin float. Um, but it's actually kind of tricky. I'm surprised Katie was able to do it so easily. So. You have little faith. You have little faith. In me. There we go. Ah, it was easier than I thought. I think it's, maybe it's easier in this jug. It's like maybe you just need a big jug. No, oh, you know what it is? Altitude. We've climbed up higher, so it's easier to get, like, there's, like, some science happening there. What, are you a scientist? I am a scientist. This morning a you were a farmer. The afternoon you're a scientist. What will you be for dinner? Oh, maybe this is the god of seafaring. <gasps> and my coins are now seafaring on his ocean of coinage. <laughs> Came across another noteworthy um, slab, slab. <laughs> slab, I guess. And this is the first time I think I've ever seen this, where it, it was done, I'm assuming, by a foreign company. And it's a shipping company, which makes sense. That ties in with all of the shipping stuff that we had seen before. But it's just straight up striking to see English, blam, onto one of these. And then the date written in English and a assumingly foreigner name, <laughs> Mr. James Hood on the slab as well really sticks out among all of the rest of them that are all written with like you know japanese kanji strictly actually actually it's all kanji so it makes it feel really old there's no kana on almost any of them yeah it's very traditional feeling and then boom foreigner <laughs> it's kind of like me <laughs> i'm shooting a movie <laughs> spiders don't stand a chance all right, so we're coming down to the toilet, and I want to, you to tell me if you see anything strange about this toilet. Okay, so just go ahead. Okay. Um, off the bat, the urinals being right outside the toilet really isn't that strange. I've had many a time where I've just walked out and there's a dude peeing in front of me. So is that what you're hinting That's at? That's basically what I'm hinting at, that uh, this is a mixed gender toilet. And this isn't a mixed gender toilet. Females still have privacy, but men, they just don't. I don't understand why. Why are you being put through this? Why are you on display when you're urinating? <laughs> you gotta do it, man. Do guys like this? Is, is it, <laughs> what, what, what happened to where you didn't get this? I mean, it benefits you in the fact that there aren't gigantic lines, but yeah. I'm not trying to see your noodle when I'm finished. <laughs> I gotta pee. <laughs> Aw, squatter. How'd it go? It was good. There were no spiders in there, but then I wondered how many bugs were in there. And then I also thought, you know, they want people to make do monetary donations, but what if I just came here with a big thing of toilet paper and put a roll in every, every toilet that I came across? I kind of liked that idea. Like, you go up to the toilet, <laughs> Try not to throw it in the toilet, but throw it like they throw the money. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty cute idea. I will never do this because someone will come and they'll, they'll pick up all the toilet paper behind me and they'll give it back to me. You think, you think this gives me some sort of toilet paper grumbling? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So like you are saying urinals are no good, but I would rather just be able to walk up and do something, even if people got to look at my noodle, than have to deal with a squatter just to urinate. I feel you on that. And yeah. that's why you don't have to worry about the lines. And I guess if they gave women urinals that maybe I'd be okay with that. Like if you could just but, walk up and like... Yeah, if it was just a walk-up situation and everybody just quickly did the things like they needed a to do. Like or something? Like, yeah. You have to have, I don't know, I don't know how the physics of this is, is just out of my, out of my expertise. <laughs> but uh, something that is within my expertise is, check out that pony. <laughs> slinky, slinky, everyone loves the slinky, what rolls down the stairs. Is that just Ren and Stimpy? <laughs> I think I'm mixing up songs regardless. Um, this would have been a slinky adventure. 
a very good one too. <laughs> We'd be here way longer if we were trying to get every step. <laughs> seems to be just your standard Japanese vending machine, which of which there are zillions and zillions of. But this one has got a button down here that you can give a donation, either 100 yen or 10 yen. And it doesn't say what you're donating to, so we're thinking maybe you're just donating to whoever runs this machine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's kind of heart and stuff, so maybe it's going to a good cause. I don't know, I've just never seen it before. They will carry you up the hill. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. I can't I can't even put a price on that. Like how much someone would have to pay for me to carry them up a hill. Well they used to you used to send a dog and I guess that, that the dog's revolted. Yeah. We're not doing this anymore. No. <laughs> we weren't joking when we said we like went through an area that was just ice cream and udon. There's so many different ice cream flavors that you can get at just this one shop. Ones that I've never seen in my life. This really is onions on this one. I'm not sure what the kama tama means, but there's onions and some sort of like a dark sauce, which I feel might be like a shoyu or something like that, but that's just a guess. It's definitely not going to be sweet because sweet and onions doesn't really seem like it goes, but the ice cream is going to be sweet. Um, and then there's this gold foil ice cream right here. I kind of want to bite into that. What is that like? But there's a special ice cream here that has little bubbles on it. So we're looking for where to get that a little bit cheaper. <laughs> yes! Do you even know what your flavor is? It's like some sort of brown sugar. What's yours? Show you. Which is? I'm so excited. Um, soy sauce. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, I don't know if we can tap these. That looks dangerous. What is the ball all about? It looks like kick, kicks, 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 kicks. It's a little bit like kicks, not as um. It's it's much more hollow. Oh, it just dissolves in your mouth. Yeah, up. and a uh, little sweet, not mm. super sweet. Um, it's not overwhelmingly show you, but it's salt. It has like a salty bit to it. Like it's not like a super sweet thing. It's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Mine is called Wasanbon, and the girl that works here said it is the most popular, and the sign next to it has an explanation of the flavor because I don't think people know what the flavor is just by the name, yeah. And it says it's like a brown sugar type thing. And it really does quite a lot taste like brown sugar. It's really good. And I think the start, the start, the, like the standout thing is these little balls. Yeah. Because they just evaporate in your mouth instantaneously when they hit the saliva. Like, in a way that is almost surprising how quickly they just dissolve. Mm. I got a mouthful of balls, y'all. <laughs> Not only you can enjoy udon, your dog can enjoy it too. Seriously, there are udon noodles in here. Somebody's gonna be getting some dog noodles. <laughs> I'm sending them to you. We've come up to something that's quite unique. I've never seen anything exactly like this before. They've got this giant sand sculpture that they've done on a beach. And apparently the legend goes that it was first made in a single night in the 1600s. And ever since then, once or twice a year, the locals will come out and make sure that it all like still looks good. And it seems like it's impeccable. It looks like not a grain of sand is in the yeah, wrong place. Yeah, somebody's down there in the just moved that grain into the right place and they walked away. And I think it's supposed to mimic the, the look of an old school coin. It looks like a, a five yen coin, mm. Maybe that, like with the hole in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I mean the characters on it and stuff are a little bit different, but it's mm. in that same vein. And we, we followed signs up here that just had a coin on them. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, where are we going? I was like, we're following the coin. <laughs> it's pretty big too. How did, uh, what did the sign say? It says it is- 10 meters across? 90 meters one way and 122 meters another. I know meters. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that that's way smaller than it actually is. I think it's interesting that from our perspective, it looks like a circle. Yeah, but it does the, not look like But the an way oval. that they did, they made it look like a circle so that it would look like that from the top of the hill as they had to make it uh, ellipti elliptical or whatever. Yeah. So that it wouldn't be, if otherwise it would look weird. You know mm. what I mean? So they had to screw with our perceptions of the universe. Yeah. The earth is flat, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
Are you jumping? No, I'm waiting to be picked up. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Hi. <laughs> I got a purse on my head. <laughs> oh, I think I'm getting old. Or I'm getting fat. <laughs> Maybe both. You come down to the, uh, let's switch sides so that you're not in the hole. Now I'm big. Yeah. We at the beach. And it's more of like <laughs> the tide is out and that's the time that you're supposed to come because if you get the right angles with all of like the the right the, the right puddles of water that are still left on the beach you can get like a illusion that you're like walking on glass kind of like yeah. a reflection if you can find the right puddle you can do something pretty amazing and there's a lot of people out here taking pictures in fact i can see people right now taking wedding photos yeah i'm i'm heading directly towards the wedding photos because i feel as though that they've probably scoped out the right place had some sort of guidance like this is valuable to them yeah. so I'm gonna go over there and honky up those photos. <laughs> our, our guidebook specifically says that this is popular like on social media networks and stuff. Like hmm. basically it's talking about Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I can kind of see that, but I think it's funny because it's a perfect, uh, it's like the perfect example of like Instagram fakeness because it's just sort of kind of, I mean, it's not a horrible place, but it's, it's kind of ratty looking and you know, people are making these, the pictures, <laughs> these pictures look like epic. When we drove up and I looked at what we were at, I was like, huh, we're, we must be in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, we follow that like the name of the place was the name from the book. So back in our day, this was called MySpace angles. Ah, uh, yes. Can you do yes. some MySpace angles with me? How do you do it like this? You gotta get high and you gotta like put your cleavage You gotta put out. your boobs together. And you can only show the boobs in the face. Boobs oh. in the face, boobs in the face. There we go. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what looked like a wedding was not a wedding. Yeah. It was a girl that is doing photos for her musical endeavors because she's got a trombone and a, not a wedding dress, but I mean it basically is a wedding dress. Mm. And she's standing in the puddle. Yep. Which seems like it's probably gonna make a cool looking picture, but that's pretty hardcore dedication <laughs> to that photo. I'm to the trombone as well. But when people when people do, if she has like a recital or something, they will print out these pictures and give them out like flyers, like mm -hmm. at City Hall and stuff like that. And it'll have like what she's wearing makes perfect sense. Like I can totally see- All the girls see... look like they're going to the prom. Yes, I can totally see what they're making with this. Mm. But I never really thought that you'd be standing in the puddle. <laughs> it looks slightly comical. Yeah, it looks a little ridiculous. <laughs> I want to see the photos. I fit a photo, a photo. I mean, the dude mm. looks like he's knows what he's doing. He's getting like the, the, the shots and the MySpace angles down and everything. So mm. probably pretty nice pictures. We found a puddle. We got a little shot here for Katie to take a picture of her in the little reflection. And I could definitely see, you could you could rig this up so that it looked like it was a pretty awesome looking shot. I could definitely see the potential for that. <laughs> but I kind of like seeing behind the curtain a little bit and just seeing like, just some puddles and some people. There's a lot of people here now all of a sudden. I think they're here for the sunset mostly. But we deduced that because of where the sun is right now, I think that you would get better photos if you came for the sunrise, because the sun would come up over here and then you'd be able to get um, a pretty good picture that wasn't completely silhouetted. Silhouetted out the way that you're running into now with the way the sun is setting. We used my logic about the sun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it stood not with our backs to the ocean. So the background isn't quite as cool looking, but you can actually see the definition the of the person a little bit mm -hmm. and the reflection and stuff. Everybody else is like prioritizing sun over like the human being that they're taking a photo of. Which... But just like I said, you know what you look like. That's true. I you do. know what you look like. <laughs> you know what I look like even better than I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I saw your silhouette, I'd be like, that's Eric Klein. Oh yeah? You yeah. think you could get me out of a, like a lineup of criminals or whatever? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we'll test this one day. I wanted to do that with like body parts and stuff. Like, do you know your friends or your boyfriends or your husband's eyebrows or something like that? Yeah, think you could pick out my fingers? Yeah. Think you could def tell me which hand it was from? Maybe. Oh, that would be impressive. We're going to test you on this. Probably not. <laughs> Testing means I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs>
I think the standout piece of this is the sunset and watching the sun set through all these different little puddles. Yeah, the puddle in front of us is it's dissipated. There's no more sunshine in there except for like a tiny sparkle. <laughs> And now, ah, oh, you can't see it on the ocean either. But, oh yeah. But you can see it on the in little the ribbon puddles. in yeah. the middle. It's neat. Yeah. And it's almost gone. We've come back into the town and when we punched in the location that we were coming to on the GPS, it gave us a message and said that there are often burglaries from cars. So when you come to this neighborhood, be careful, <laughs> which is not something you see so often. But then when we got here, I realized, okay, it's kind of the red lighty district, like where the girly bars and stuff are. I just think about like this GPS thinking that any place in Japan is dangerous and how it wouldn't survive in the United States. This GPS would be losing its mind if it thinks anything around here is dangerous. But the reason we came is because there is a little gyoza bar that is here and they have something called sudachi gyoza which is made with like a sudachi is like a little like a, something between like a lime and a lemon and it is like a little citrus type thing and um I don't know how they're gonna make a it gyoza. Smells like bagel bites up in it smells like, is it the, just the crust of the bagel bites. It does smell a bit like bagel bites, yeah. So I'm not sure how they're if they just put sudachi inside or whatever, but I've got a little bit of vinegar here, and uh, that's all I'm gonna go with. That's what it was recommended as. It kind of just tastes like regular gyoza. I don't. It takes an overwhelming amount of sudachi, which is, I guess, kind of a disappointment. It's a good gyoza, but it's not like, maybe there's a little bit of, like, yeah, I guess on the top of the flavor a little bit, there's a little, there's a little bit of, like, a citrusy taste, but it's not like a punch, and it's not like this, like, amazingness that we had out of the lemon that was in the udon this morning. It's not like that. So, it's kind of fun. I don't know if it's like, you gotta come here and have this stuff because of it, but, you know, I mean, we're here and we're gonna have some gyoza. <laughs> All right, update. This little dish that I thought was vinegar, <laughs> it might have a little bit of vinegar in it, but it's mostly actually that citrus juice. So the way to get the citrus action in your mouth is to really let this guy soak in there so that you can get like, like really take a, really take a bath so that you can get more of the citrus punch into your mouth. The reason I thought this was vinegar is because gyoza usually is just served with vinegar, but it was a little odd that they brought out this dish by itself with the vinegar and usually that's not how it's served. So. Yeah, that completely changes the game. Like when you're really good at wet. Mm. Yeah, it's actually quite good now. Um, so gyoza is like a dumpling with meat and usually like something green inside of it, maybe onion or something like that. And that combination with citrus in it isn't something I would have thought to do, but I'm glad somebody else did because it really actually is quite, quite damn delicious. I see why this is in the magazine now. I was a little baffled before I figured out that, oh, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> It's similar to what burning leaves in America sounds like. We're gonna do that again after she's done. <laughs> well, we pushed buttons and nothing happened. I'm, why, I'm talking to your phone. <laughs> I'm gonna start over. <laughs> By the way, when you edit this and you're looking at it and you're like, why is everything all washed out? This is what this guy looks like today, don't worry. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed our first video from our visit to Shikoku. Lots more on the way. Liking, commenting, and subscribing helps teach those pesky YouTube robots to share our content with other people too. If you'd like to help us make more videos, consider supporting us on Patreon, linked below.